Hey guys, MoJK here, back with another Dungeon Hunter Champions video. I've definitely been playing this game religiously, um, and I haven't stopped, but you know, I haven't made a video in a while, so I just wanted to kind of recap my, what's going on in my account and some of the things going on in the game as well. So right now, there's actually a PvP event, and what this is, it's just like the energy event that preceded it. You use a certain amount of PvP energy, and then you hit certain milestones, and then you get the uh, respective rewards. So this is like something that you kind of want to be doing anyway, using your PvP energy. But this incentivizes you to do it a little bit more, maybe, and you get these nice rewards out of it. So I've already gotten the gold, which is really nice. Uh, gold in this game runs out all the time. And, uh, you know, I, the 600 uh, PvP tokens or whatever is the next reward for me. And that's actually a lot. Like, um, you would have to do 100 challenges to get that normally. Or even beat regular people, like, hundreds of times. So 600 is a good chunk. And, um, yeah, that's, that's a really nice reward. Uh, and I'll kind of talk about what you can buy with that in a second here. 80 gems is kind of, like, okay. I mean, that's a couple of refreshes for me. And then 115, you get the 4-star max style fuzzle puff, level 40, which is really important if you're going to try to uh, promote that to a 5-star fodder. And um, if you're getting to the stage where you need to start 6-starring your characters, uh, these are the easiest way to do it. 6-starring uh, is actually very painful in this game uh, so far, but uh, I'm kind of getting to the point where I need to do it and stop uh, delaying the process. I keep finding other units to 5-star instead. Um, but I really should be moving on to 6-star. And then finally, if you go to 150, you get that nice light dark uh, disc. So, you know, that's very crucial to getting some of these rarer units like Dark Timekeeper uh, and so forth. So, 150 is actually very, very doable within like 6 days or whatever. Um, actually, what's funny is that when it first came out, it was 500, which was like impossible almost. You'd have to do a ton of uh, refreshes and stuff, but 150 should be doable for almost anybody. Uh, so that's the PvP event going on right now. Um, so real quick with that PvP token, the 600 that I talked about, what you can buy with those is you go to the shop here, you go to the PvP shop, you definitely want to get the Tutor Fuzzle Puffs every week. Like, that's the one thing you do not want to miss out on. I already bought mine for this week, but yeah, you don't want to miss out on that at all. Because that's your way of uh, basically scaling up your 5 stars. Your Nat 5 stars are really rare and hard to pull, obviously. I mean, the pull rates are like 0.5%, uh, 0.6% in certain banners or whatever. So you're not going to get a ton of copies or dupes. But this is your way to scale up, and you don't want to miss out on that. Uh, Dark Astromancer, I don't think she's really worth it. That's a lot of tokens for her. Um, I don't know, maybe there's some PvP uses for her. Derby Girl, uh, she's good in 5v5, but, I mean, I already pulled her, um, I don't know if she's worth 900 tokens either. I mean, there's plenty of other options, but, you know, if you wanted to get her and you really like the way she plays in 5v5, uh, possibly that's a decent purchase there. Valkyrie is also a good 5v5 support, and, um, I mean, I can imagine also some people buying these uh, as, like, uh, skill-ups for their nature Valkyrie or whatever, but it's pretty expensive in my opinion. Mercenary is probably not worth it. Training Fuzzle Puff, eh, for 200 I don't think it's worth it either. And honestly, these discs aren't worth it, uh, in my opinion, because, again, 480 600 These are, this is actually really hard to get, just farming, like, you know, normal arena battles and challenges, so it takes a while to get them. And um, one disc isn't really going to make or break you, really. And honestly, the game drops so many rare discs anyway that you're um, better off farming it and not wasting it all here. Again, you just want to focus on the training fuzzle, tutor fuzzle puff, first of all, and then maybe something else that, as you need it. But I'm just going to hoard mine until you know something else comes in the shop. Anyway, why don't I go ahead and show you guys a little bit of gameplay here. Um, uh, yes, I do know about that. Or well, I'll show you my characters first of all. So, I have a summoning video where I pulled a Blade Master. Um, I was totally unexpected. Totally unexpected. I did a bunch of rare disc summons. Didn't really get a whole lot. Then I did like just a handful of the ones on the Blade Master summon banner, like maybe six pulls or something like that, and I got her. And I was like really happy about it. I recorded a video, but then the sound cut out, so I did not publish it. But if you're curious, I have it unlisted, and I can leave the link in the description. But yeah, I didn't want to publish it because the audio was too messed up, uh, even by my standards. 
But what's funny is that like the next day, I was just doing like the three summon daily mission thing. And you know, I was just like, yeah, well, this is a good excuse to do some rare summons. So I did two like rare disc pulls, got nothing. And I did one on the Blade Master banner and I got another Blade Master, believe it or not. So I know the rates are really low. So the chances of pulling two of these like in such close successions is very, very low. And I don't want to like skew your perception of that. Cause um, yeah, it was probably just a fluke, but I do want to mention that I got those. And then this guy I got from the uh, legendary map. Basically, if you go to, um, oops, wrong one. If you go to seven, board seven on legendary, he's gonna be right after this uh, 10th level here. Like he's just standing here and you summon him for free. And it's actually before the seven eleven stage. So you get, you know, I think fire is very useful for 7-Eleven, but you know, you don't necessarily need him. But anyway, that's how I got him. But let me go ahead and show you how I am farming some of the bosses. Um, so Elder Drake, I have cleared it all, but it really took some luck and it also took like some strong friend reps. But what I farm usually is uh, stage seven here. So that's my party. Um, I am using Timekeeper's uh, excellent synergy trait, which is kind of like a leader skill and it reduces everybody's uh, skill cooldowns by 15%. So it's not like element specific, you know, it doesn't only work for water, it works for everybody. So this is my party, it's basically a bunch of supports and then um, most of the damage on the boss is going to come from my snake lady because she's really good at um, ongoing damage. Or some people call them dots, which is damage over time, that's like the term I think from Summoner's War. But she's really good for dots and then um, my time mage who um, also can kind of heal, which is why he's replacing um, Zircon in this party composition. He's not as good of a support, but he does a little bit of that with the healing, and then he also provides damage as well uh, with the ongoing damage. So he and the Snake Lady are doing basically all the damage on the boss. Um, so if you're not getting those dots to land, then it's going to be kind of hard. It's going to take a while. But if you do get him to land at a decent rate, you know, it should be like a kind of like a two minute fight total. So right now we have two dots on him, uh, as you can see under his health bar. Now they're, they've gone away. But yeah, I mean, you do want a decent amount of support, at least early on. Um, maybe if you're decked out on really good gear and you're six starred and everything, you don't need as many supports. But for me, if I don't bring a lot of supports, I can die very easily. So that's why I have this party composition. Uh, the Nature Valk, of course, is great because um, she's like constantly uh, increasing attack speed. She's also reducing cooldowns on all the skills, which is very important. Uh, who else? Of course, Light Boon Sister, everybody knows about her. She's the priority farming unit. Um, you want to farm her up on the weekend during the light uh, like demon level or whatever it's called because she's basically the best support in the game. Um, she can strip the enemy boss of like buffs that he puts on himself, shields and things like that. She also does some healing. So she is crucial. Uh, so as you can see that took about two minutes like I said. Um, that's the Elder Drake farming. I'll go ahead and show you what I'm farming with the uh, Steel Widow here. So I am stuck on six because um, I can't kill him in time. Like I, I gotten close before, but I have like very weak um, fire team. Like I don't have a fire team that would be ideal for this nature element. So what I do is I farm the fire one before that level five because I have so many water units. Um, now this party composition, the um, light boon sister again, she's there to strip the shield. The um, Snake Lady again is there for the dots. Same thing with Time Mage and also for a little bit of healing. This Candy Munchkin, the water one, is actually very good for this level because she does dots as well. She also does some like uh, HP based um, damage and she attacks very quickly. She also has like an AoE, uh, which is sometimes handy as well. So I'm really liking her. Uh, and then I'm using my uh, Water Naga as kind of like the tank in a way. He shields the party constantly. But what's funny is that like as soon as I was getting him up to five stars and as you can see I'm putting him in here even though he's only level 25 because he's also kind of uh, leeching some experience off of these runs 
But as soon as I kind of got him to 5 and I'm getting close to leveling him up, I pulled a Dark Naga, uh, as you can see over here on the left, who is like better. Like, yeah, water is a better element for this, but Dark Naga has amazing skills. He also has a, um, a buff strip against enemies, and then he also has a shield. So he's like shielding your party and he's stripping the boss of buffs, which is like gonna help out Light Boon Sister because sometimes she can't do it all by herself. Uh, she has cooldowns to deal with. She has um, sometimes she misses because of accuracy and stuff like that. So she's not always reliable by herself. But with another stripper, uh, as they're called, it should make it a lot more reliable. Um, because if you don't strip those shields and it takes you too long to kill the Steel Widow, basically uh, the Steel Widow will wipe you out with these like um, triple laser attacks and stuff like that. Uh, you can't really survive that because. Um, yeah, so it's basically it's a race against the clock. Uh, you have to be able to kill them quickly. And in order to do that, you need a bunch of uh, dots. You need a lot of ongoing damage. And you also need um, to be able to strip that shield. Because, you know, that shield is just buying that Seal Widow extra time. Uh, time that you don't have um, if you want to survive. So hopefully I can get some dots on this guy. Uh, the runs are pretty reliable, I would say, though. Although not a single dot has landed so far. Alright, so there's the shield. Hopefully some Light Boon Sister can strip it, which she is not. Um, this is actually a very bad run. Like, I'm not getting dots on him, and I'm not stripping the shield. I know I should be doing it manually, but you know me, I'm all about that auto battle. <laughs> and I'm commentating as I go, so I can't really do it at the same time. But this might actually end up in a loss. Okay, so we have three dots on him now. That's kind of a good catch-up method, I guess, but... If I don't kill him soon, he's gonna wipe me out. Strip that shield, please. Oh, there it goes. I killed him just in time. Did you see that? Yeah, he busted out that tr the, the crazy laser attack and I killed him just in time. If I had um, killed him a second or two later, I probably would have gotten wiped out. So yeah, that's, <laughs> that's my Steel Widow farming team. Again, if I have that Dark Naga in here, um, the runs are going to be more reliable. He's going to still have that shield capability, but then he's also going to be able to strip those um, buffs on the bosses. Um, let me show you my uh, arena team as well. So uh, I'm starting to hit a point where I can't really win reliably anymore, and I probably need to play with the party composition a little bit. But let me see who this person brings. Okay, so I think I can beat this guy. Um, attack speed yeah let me see if I can beat this guy but like I said I'm getting to the point where I'm starting to have some difficulty beating people consistently so um, you know I'm gonna either have to figure something out or I'm gonna have to take some losses in arena just to make sure that I'm still completing that PvP event because you can't be too afraid of losses that you don't try and then you're not gonna get the, uh, the milestones so yeah, this is actually a pretty tough fight for me, but it looks like I will pull it out, at least for this round. Uh, let me go ahead and manually do the skill here. Sometimes uh, they take a little bit too long to do the skills. So even if you're on auto, you can uh, trigger the skills immediately when you want to, um, so it helps out sometimes. And you can even like direct their movement. Um, it'll override the auto, at least temporarily. And then like as soon as you stop controlling it, it'll just go right back to auto as well so all right so that's my arena team um and the last thing to show you i guess would be just um how i'm farming which is a huge part of this game of course my farmer is the water blade master i've gone through three farmers i've gone through the um spearman that they give you um early on in the game then i went to the water scan berserker who was really good and then i pulled the blade master unexpectedly and she's just super fast so, you know, I couldn't deny that, you know, she had to be my farmer. So what I'm doing is I'm doing board 110 on Legendary. And what's funny is that even though the boss is nature, um, my water blade master does a better job than the fire monkey king, even though he has elemental advantage. And she does better than my uh, wind blade master who has a neutral uh, elemental matchup. And the uh, wind blade master has better skills on paper, but... I think my water one just happens to have the better uh, gear, and I'm gonna keep it that way because the water one is useful um, in more content that I need, like um, 
she can be used in Elder Drake 10 because it's like basically water on water, which is fine. And then Steel Widow 10 is going to be um, water versus fire, which is an advantage. So I'm going to keep my water one stronger. Um, so Blade Masters are really good at farming and killing things really quickly. Uh, but unless you have really top level gear, they're not great for boss fights. What they are good for, um, when you bring them to like the, um, you know, Elder Drake or Still Widow, for example, what they're good for is clearing out the mobs really quickly because, you know, time matters and you don't want to like farm th for three minutes per run when you can do it in, you know, one or two. So, um, that's why she's going to be brought there eventually when I can handle it. But until then, I'm going to have to use my supports. So, um, yeah, I'm going to sell that. So basically, this is what I'm leveling right now. Again, I want to get that Dark Naga in my lineup as soon as possible. I'm leveling up the Fox Assassin because um, her dots may actually help me beat uh, Steel Widow 6 because fire is good against nature. And plus, she's good at 5v5. So um, I think a little bit of the um, leveling and stuff benefits you there. I'm not quite ex uh, sure exactly how it works, but I know the gear doesn't matter. And then the other guy is just fodder. Like once he gets to level 30, uh, I'm gonna raise him up to four stars and then he's gonna help me raise up my Dark Naga to five stars or promote him. So anyway, that's a lot of stuff I just condensed into one video. This might be uh, too long, I don't know, but um, hopefully you guys kind of uh, enjoyed watching what's going on with my account at least. And uh, maybe it gives you some ideas on how to handle yours as well. Um, Oh yeah, and I bought the XP times two uh, for three days, 72 hours for 200 gems because I farm so much, it's definitely worth it. And um, I'm doing like uh, energy refreshes and stuff like that. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, I'll probably try to show you guys some 5v5 footage uh, later tonight or something because I think it's interesting as well. So take care. And if you're enjoying this game, let me know in the comments. Peace.